Wow, welcome everyone to the Kapapani Guide for the Barbarians for the Appetite of Zer. So over here, I want to show you guys one of my farming build for the leveling of the cliff. And you can see that this build have a few aspects that is very interesting. But why do I call this like an auto farming build? Is that you just have to press one or two buttons most of the time. You'll be auto attacking and also gaining a lot of fury. After that, you basically cast whatever spells you want. And most of the time, your HP won't even drop. This is because we're using a melted heart together with insane amount of attack speed. And you can see this replay currently, this is a tier 8. I'll also demonstrate to you guys how we can clear up to tier 12, tier 13 using the right method. So this is my favorite build at the moment to clear the dungeon pretty fast and also to farm my glyph level. Let's have a look at the build and let me go through some highlights. For a majority of the time you're going to see my replay, I don't really take much damage. This is because the uber unique amulet, the Melted Heart of Shijo, will allow me to use my fury in terms of protecting myself from damage. And by coming over to my character, you can see that I'm currently using increased attack speed by 50% upon critical striking with a core spell. And this is one of the highlights of the build. You'll be constantly generating fury and also triggering your 8 attack swapping overpower. So the combination of the build is that you'll be gaining tons of attack speed. And by triggering the 8 weapon swap using your weapons, so here I'm using a 2 handed weapon and also a 2 handed weapon to swap my weapons. And by doing this, we'll be dealing majority the highest damage with overpower every 8 weapon swaps. And for survivability, we're going to go with a Melted Half Syndrome. So the combination of this allows me to benefit from more damage using the Berserk ring over here. And this also allows me to gain more fury through Berserk. Now over here, I'll show you guys briefly a tier 12 dungeon using a similar method. And here I'll be using a potion to increase my attack speed even further. So majority of the time you can see that we don't really have a problem against the monsters. And this build is designed so you're very tanky. This avoid making mistakes or dying to random things. And because you'll be constantly gaining a lot of fury through your attack speed, it is both offensive and also defensive, which is what I love about the build. Now quickly skipping to the point which I got the elite bosses. One of the reasons it took me about 8 minutes to do this particular dungeon is because those monsters are separated and they keep running away from me. But using any of the method I spoke about in the previous video, what you're going to see is, notice here I have saved a particular Shire for this purpose. I have saved one of the blasting Shire, which is the best Shire for the barbarians. And this allows me to quickly clear out the elite monsters very, very fast. I do believe most of the players and other builds will have difficulties against the final three elites. And using the method I mentioned in the previous video, you can be protecting and also saving one of your Shires for those bosses. And by saving this Shire, this allows my build to clear the dungeon super, super fast. Now over here, just to show you guys a little further, you can see a majority of the time we're constantly no more attacking. And by no more attacking and also right clicking at the same time, you're swapping weapons. And by swapping weapons and also gaining tons of fury, you'll be doing overpower damage. What I love about the build is, I can pull tons of elites together. And the moment I do overpower damage, this will be one third and maybe you know, half or even 80% you know, of the monster's HP. As long as I do a few overpower hits, everything will die on the map. And this also allows me to be super durable because I'm constantly gaining fury. And as you can see over here, the monster dies, and then we move forward. Now, because the majority of the skills and also everything related to the build is very similar to my previous build, I'll be adjusting this one slightly and also posting it for you guys. So briefly coming over to my build, there isn't anything too major. I'm currently going with a more damage route, so I'm gaining more damage while through Fortified. And also I'm dealing more damage through the two-handed weapon with the Grandfather. If I come over to my Paragon, you can see that most of my Tear of the Blood Paragon board over here is filled up with the knots over here. I made a mistake previously, I didn't fill them up. So here you can see I'm gaining about 92% damage with a level 6 glyph. It is much much harder to level those and I'm getting a little tired with my fingers as I spam them. So we'll try to figure out a new way to level those or maybe how long it will take us. I have heard it will take us over 300 hours to get this one to maximum level, which is ridiculous, right? Now for this particular build, you're gaining most of the damage through overpower damage and also through using maces. You're also gaining more damage through critical strike damage and also through berserking. 
and because we're constantly getting berserking with hitting enemies with a core spell, which is perfect by having more attack speed to constantly gain more berserk. And this three and ten will give us more berserk through fury. Now briefly going through the skill rotations of this particular build. Because I'm calling this one auto attack, you know, farming build, ideally for 99% of the time you will not see your HP lose. You will not see your HP drop. I did this around tier 12 and you can see majority of the time guys, I have no problem. Sometimes I get a little reckless, sometimes I don't even dodge any spells, but that's okay. Because of the build is designed for you to be super durable. You may be a little slow in terms of monster clearing, but it is very satisfying and very easy going with the build. So this is mostly an auto farming build. And you can see that sometimes you will take a little while if you do not get your overpower hits. But once you get them, the monster will disappear on the map. And in terms of the build itself, I really don't see any downside except for the lack of damage, which can be compensated by leveling up our glyphs. And of course guys, what I do is, yeah, there you go, finally had overpower hits. Sometimes it takes a while. Sometimes just with the first two overpower hits, everything dies. Now there are a few highlights of the build which I want to share with you guys. Always look for a multiple pack of monsters. So here look, you can see that I can found you know two packs of elites. By grouping them together, I still don't have any risks of dying. And by grouping them together, if I overpower, most of them die within a few hits. So if you can find yourself one pack, it's good. If you can find yourself two packs, just group them and kill them together. And this is one of the best ways to clear the content fast before the boss. Now as for killing the final three elite boss at the end of the map, what I recommend is saving one of the crucial damage boosting shines, shines. Shrine? <laughs> shines. <laughs> I cannot pronounce it. I remember in the previous video, you're like, what are you talking about? It is shines, right? So saving one of the crucial damage boosting shines and go a little further and clear out monsters this way. So here I'm saving some monsters on the map and I'll keep running forward. Because by doing so, also you gotta see me really tanky, right? So this is 12, tier 12. So by saving some monsters at the back of the map, I can come back and clear those monsters and then, you know, this allows me to go back to my shines and have a boost of damage. Now, majority of the time, if you do not save one of the shines, what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself a little short on damage and also time, especially when the three final elites is summoned as a ranged monster. They tend to run away from you, and this can be very troublesome and also eats up a lot of time. So here you can see that by preparing this correctly, I can kill those monsters within you know, 10 to 30 seconds. And this is one of the best ways I find for clearing the dungeons after tier 10. Now before tier 10, if you're using this build, you don't really have troubles. You just go through the monsters and finish them off. So what I do now is I'll provide you guys with a full replay for the tier 12. I do believe you can see how I play for tier 12, but for lower tier dungeons guys, you can clear this much, much faster. One of the biggest highlights is you should be right clicking and also left clicking at the same time. So keep yourself counting. One basic attack and also one core skill attack. And this will allow you to swap weapons. And the moment you get to add weapon swaps, you'll be doing a massive amount of critical hit with overpower damage. And this is where you finish most of the monsters.
Now, if you guys haven't subscribed, it is a really good time to do so because I'll be covering tons of Diablo 4 related topics and also videos and also guides. We'll be looking into the top meta builds, no meta builds, leveling up, and also Paragon tricks. We'll also look into the latest events and also official updates and also changes to different characters and also different builds in the game. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and also turn the notification on because a lot of you who are watching the videos have not subscribed. You can see 80% of the viewers who are watching our videos have not subscribed. So make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for the latest update for Diablo 4.